and that's it. Okay, so good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk about paragraph and paragraph. I want to tell you a pretty small story. Um, I recently had the opportunity to work in a really interesting Drupal project, Drupal 8 project, but we had a really, really short deadline. Uh, one of the requirements of the project was that the client needed to be able to have the control over the look and feel of almost all the sites. I mean, almost all the sites was basic pages, but they wanted to have the control to change things uh, from place, move the stuff around. So we decided that we needed to go with Paragraph because it would give the client that flexibility that they wanted. And we also wanted to give it a try to Paragraph. We had never used Paragraph. We wanted to give it a try. And let's see how that work, how does it work with Paragraph. We had an idea. We said, ah, maybe they play nice. And we were wrong. They played hell nice. Yeah, it was great. And that's what I'm going to show you in this presentation. So, uh, so I'm Kevin Porras. I'm the director of technology at Manatee. You can find me almost in every place on the internet with the same username. And if you want to access the slides, they are at that URL. Uh, we'll have the URL in a couple more slides. So, hi. Hi. Next. As I said, I work for Manatee. Manatee is an agent full service web agency with a human first collaborative approach in design and excellence in, the, in delivery. We do UX, uh, visual design, and obviously development. Obviously, using Drupal. I mean, we are here. Okay, so this is the agenda. We are going to start talking about paragraph. Then we are going to take a look into particle. That's a flavor of paragraph. And we look at what will we build. How do they work together? So we'll build the paragraph components. Then we'll build the paragraph. <coughs> and we learn how to link them together. Then I share a couple of snowflakes. I mean, what happens if I need to insert a view? What happens if I need to insert a block? That's not a normal paragraph. So we learn how to do that. Final touch and QA. Disclaimer, I'm a developer. I'm terrible with designing. I hate, you can read it. I'm terrible at CSS, but I love SAS, and I'm here in front of you giving a mostly front-end oriented session, so let's do it. Okay, so paragraph. Uh, taking from project page, paragraph is the new way of content creation. Uh, it allows the site builder to make things clearer so that you can give more editing power to your end users. Yeah, that's what we want. Um, we could say paragraph. a paragraph is a block of content, a piece of content that you can naturally embed into your entities. Um, they are full entities, so they have bundles, they can have fields. Um, so the system is as flexible as you configure it. We are going to see. That's great. Um, we are going to see it in action a little bit later. <coughs> So what's Parallel? Parallel helps you and your team to build thoughtful, parent-driven user interfaces using atomic design. So this is taken again from the official docs. Uh, it's still agnostic, language agnostic, and some other features that are there. Um, it allows us to create living style guides that we are going to see in action. First, let's talk about Atomic design. As Stephen Hay says, we are not designing pages, we are designing systems of components. And atomic design is a methodology for creating design systems. Here we have five levels of components in atomic designs. Um, maybe a small disclaimer. Here I'm going to show you the theory about atomic design. 
Um, however, in the practice, um, this is a flexible system that you can use according to what best fits to you. So, in the first level, we have eight ohms. Um, so, for example, this label, this input, this button. All of these are atoms, and you can merge them together to create a molecule. So every component is an atom that you can style independently and you can merge them together to create a molecule. That molecule could also have a styling so that it looks okay when it's together. If you put together more than one molecule, you can have organism. Uh, so for example, this header is an organism. Um, I miss something. Yeah. Then you have templates. That is, let's say, the skeleton of your page with no real content, but the spaces for where that real content will be. And you have pages that is real content. So these are the five levels of atomic design. Atoms, molecules, <coughs> organisms, templates, and pages. So, what's particle? Um, that's a tool that phase two developed, and they describe it as an opinionated set of tools and examples to build an application agnostic, agnostic design system, apply that design system to a locally served pattern lab for rapid prototyping. We are going to see that. And what is important for us, apply the design system to a Drupal team. So we are going to see that we create the parallel templates in the files that we are going to integrate into our Drupal team. Let's continue. So what will we build? We are going to build this hero component that contains a picture, a headline, more text, and links. So, how are we going to build this? How do we make these things work together? So, first thing, we need to build the parallel components. Then we need to create the paragraph type config. We need to create the paragraph type template and link them together. So in order to link them together, we could use uh, some preprocess functions. We are going to see how to do all this. <coughs> so let's go back. Here we have the social menu that we are going to create a molecule of that. And then we have the wall component. So first, uh, the social menu molecule. It has the template. Uh, that's tweaked. It has the data for the demo of that template. That's simple YAML. And we have CSS. I'm going to find this over here so that it's clearer to see it. Mm -hmm. um, is it okay? Can you do black and white? Yeah. I think I can apply a light team. I just need to. Yeah. Let's say. Is there a I think it's better. Okay, so as I said, the template is tweaked. So since it's tweaked, we can use for, we can use variables, we can use whatever tweak allows us to use. Then we have class. <coughs> we have a demo folder where we are going to place uh, demo content so that we can, in the parallel, 
the stuff we can test our component. So this demo has another tweak template where we are only including the real template and we have some uh, content that we add in a YAML file. So as you can see here, there is a variable name, social menu links, that's the variable that we are using here, and every item has page ref, classes, text, item classes. Page ref, classes, icon classes, and text. So that's how it works. I'm going to And how do we see it in Parallel? Simply this, the social menu. Nothing else, only the social menu. That's our first molecule. Let's continue. Then I created another molecule that's the, I named that Jumbotron Big, because I'm using Bootstrap. I said in the world with CSS, I need to use something. I'm using Bootstrap, and Bootstrap have the Jumbotron uh, molecule, but it's over complicated. I didn't want to use it, so I created a custom template for the Jumbotron molecule. And it looks like this. We have the bottom classes, we have um, the URL for the background image, we have some more variables here and there, we have a block, um, block is a powerful tag in Twig that allows me to totally replace what is inside, so it's pretty cool, and we have SAS. We have the demo template, where again we are including that, and we have the YAML file to provide the variables. And it looks like this. Uh, there should be an image, but <laughs> that seems that the service that provides me random headshot images is not working, but there should be an image. It looks like that. Okay. Let's continue. Now, <coughs> we need to build a paragraph. Bless you. Um, so, these are the fields that I added into this paragraph. We have a background image. <coughs> we have an image. That's for the people image. We have the title and the lead text. We also have a block and that's part of the snowflakes that I told you that we are going to see. Um, this block, we are going to use it to embed the menu block. So. Okay. Let's see this into Drupal. Let's see if my Drupal is still alive. <coughs> you know how does Drupal look. Um, it's not okay in the projector, but these are the fields. Um, manage for display it doesn't matter because it's the UI to the admin. I mean, it really matters for the content creators. It doesn't matter for what I am showing to you this moment. And we have the manage display where we configure the fields that we need to print, but we are going to handle that in templates. But it's necessary that they are there so that we can find them in the content um, index of the variables array. We are going to see that. Uh, so I'm going to 
So we'll see if this and this. And continue. Okay, so we do the, bar the paragraph and now it's the time to link them together. So, uh, you remember we have the social menu and we have the gym button bit. So, let's start with the social menu. That social menu we need to link them to, uh, to a Drupal menu. So, I use the menu, fu menu footer to place the social menu items. So, we have the template for the menu footer that, again, it only includes the molecule, but we need some preprocess. Um, I think I need to add a link here that I'm going to add after the presentation so that you can find the code in GitHub. Uh, I'm going to show that. So, we have the menu footer, there's no magic there, only including the molecule, and this is where the magic happens. We have hook per process menu in our that team file, <coughs> and here we are making all the crazy stuff so that we send the necessary variables for the molecules. So, as you can remember, the only variables that it needs is social menu links. So, we are building that all over here and we assign it here. Once we do that, our um, our menu footer, we look how we expect. So, okay, let's see. At this point, this is our menu footer. So essentially, in your your, your preprocess, that's that's like your your map. That's that's your fundamentally your connection to get the variables in your in your pattern lab from the variables in Drupal. And that's <coughs> yeah, for the things that need a special uh, preprocessing, yeah, we use preprocess. Um, there are some other situations where you have the variables ready in the template and you can just send in uh, declaring the variables in the include or embed. Oh, that's really cool. I'm, I'm glad. I've, I've been to a lot of these, this is great. This is yeah. great stuff. Thank you. Okay, so as I said, uh, there is our menu footer, and we are going to reuse it in the QL. So, let's continue. And now, this is the template for our paragraph type. It's named paragraph dash dash hero, and it is an embed and a process. So, Let's see it. This is paragraph dash dash hero. Okay. Uh, this time we're not using include, we're using embed. Why? Because embed is the tag that allows us to replace blocks. And we needed to replace blocks. So we're using embed, we're going to embed uh, our molecule and we are going to replace the block name social links. In the original template we had the block and we were building the social menu right there. Here we don't want to do that, we just want to replace it and print the field block and add a wrapper. So, this is our template, and let's see our preprocess. So here it is, I think we can do this, and Okay, so obviously we first need to ensure that we are preprocessing only our bundle, and we prepare all the variables that we need. 
Här är det, lite, etc. Så. Once we do that, our jumbotron B molecule template gets the right variables. We don't care about the block because we are replacing it. And it looks like this. So it works. It's great. And actually, I think we are seeing it in action sites some time ago. So. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple more things. <coughs> this is a site I've been building for a while, a lot. Site project. It stays there for a couple of months. Then I start working on it again. Mm. Yeah. I think it's better. Okay. So this is our content type. Sorry, our node. It's a basic page, and this basic page only has three fields. Title, body, and a component field that allows an unlimited amount of paragraph of any existing type. That's all what my content type has. So, obviously, title, uh, body is empty. Nobody needs it. Not here. And the components, we have several components. We have the hero component that is that I've been showing to you, the title, the lead, the image, the background image. This is the block where I, in the field, I said, hey, you can only select between these blocks. And yeah, the block field requires a title, but we cannot show it. Um, more settings, because that's um, menu. We have another component name to columns that, as you can assume, it allows you to place a component in one column, and another one in the other column. We have title. A common thing that I did on this side, because it's supposed to be my side, is that I added uh, fields whose name is blah blah classes. Uh, maybe we shouldn't do that for clients, but instead we could add the list of allowed classes as a list field and allow the user to select it. I think that's better for clients. This is supposed to be for me, so I can handle that. Um, text. Again, text classes. I think this is the right component. That's an image. And more stuff here and there. Is there any um, like built-in access restrictions with paragraphs? Like so you couldn't so you could put the title classes in there but not show your content editors, or is that you have to do that custom? Yeah. Um, so it's a field like any other field. So I'm not showing that field in the manage display class, but I'm using that in the pre process. So, for example, let me find it here. Um, I have wrapper class. So, I'm getting the paragraph entity from the variables. And I'm accessing the field. And I'm sending to the right variable whatever it is coming from the field. So, that sends it to the, I think, molecule. Um, template and it works. Well, um, but what I mean is, like, can you? Is there anything built in that you can prevent your content editors from even seeing and manipulating that? You field know, versions. Field, field versions. Field versions. Yeah. Work? Does it play nicely with that? Yep. Okay. I mean, biography okay. is. I'd say it's pretty mm -hmm. well built, so it usually plays nicely. Whatever it is in Drupal. Um, <coughs> in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, I checked the schedule, and uh, at the same time, there was this paragraph, love session, um, maybe two or three rooms over there, over there, there was a paragraph, 
hate session. <laughs> After this. Uh, yeah, then they moved it. <laughs> okay. So let's continue. Uh, we are ready to eating action. Okay, snowflakes. Uh, okay, this is pretty nice, but what happens if what I need to put into the page is a list of content? A view? Okay? Uh, there is a module for that. This reference allows you to uh, reference a view from your field and then just print it. So it's worked pretty well out of the box. Again, it allows you to limit what views you can use here and what displays. You can pass arguments, you can include view title. It works pretty well. Actually, <coughs> I think <coughs> I'm using it maybe, maybe not, which is there a is. Right here. So I can search into the existing views, I can select the display, add more options, include the title, the argument, and it gets printed. Is your view splitting out into paragraph types as well? Or is that just, app? you've got some paragraph, sorry, pattern lab. So have you got pattern lab template for that view or is that just mixing matching at this point? Um, Between yeah. pattern lab and what views naturally spits out? It's kind of bad. <laughs> okay. It was exposed. So this is the main template for the view. View view, I'm embedding an oh. organism that it's created on Parallel and here I'm just printing the rows as naked as possible because there is also another template like here, now the project teaser, that it's using another molecule. So it's kind of mix and match between different templates and embedding or including different pattern lab components. Okay. Block field, the same. I showed it before. It's a existing Drupal module that again it works pretty nice with this. And we are ready for it in action. It's what I'm using to print the contact block. Uh, there is, I think there is another module named contact block that allows you to expose your contact forms as blocks. So it's a combination of some modules. So, final talks. Um, Pattern Lab is a really good way to create a living style guide. Um, as I said, I'm not front-end, but I love how <coughs> it allows you to create reusable components. Uh, we all want our styles to be uh, well-organized, to be reusable, and our components to be reusable, so it's great to do that. Uh, it's easy to integrate these components into Drupal. It gives a lot of flexibility. Uh, I mean, par paragraph gives a lot of flexibility to content creators. Um, I can say it's fast to build sites this way. Maybe at the beginning um, you'll be wondering, hey, how the hell should I do to uh, integrate this specific component to this specific parallel component? But once you start doing that, uh, it's really, really fast to build sites this way. Um, as an example, there were two people and a half in the project uh, that I was working. Um, I was one of the backends. Uh, I was half time. The other person was full time. And there was one frontend. The frontend only worked on the pattern lab. Um, I think he saw the site maybe two days before final launch and he was just 
wondered, hey, this is great. And yeah, it was. So, do you have any question? Okay. Thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.